today we're going to break things down. We're going to we're going to get into the mind of Jason. Jason's been fundraising for 3 decades. I learn from Jason every day. He coaches more folks than I get than I have the opportunity to. And he's broken down pre-event fundraising into, into some really really cool digestible I almost like like buckets. Let's make sure these these yeah. boxes are checked, these buckets are full. And that way, you know, you're you're walking in the door with 50%, 70% or above of your goal fundraising dollars committed pre-event. So we're going to talk to you about how to do that. House cleaning. I'm going to steal this because Jason likes telling everybody because he's the one that gets to give away all the stuff. But stay till the end and win. If you have not been here before, we're going to give away a gift at the end of the webinar like we do every week. Um, everyone's already using the the chat feature. Don't be, yeah. don't be afraid to ask any questions. This is a very interactive webinar, even though we love to hear ourselves talk. We love to answer questions. So any feedback from y'all is great. And we also have a Q&A function at the bottom of the screen that you can use. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. If you haven't met us before, I'm Trevor Nelson. That's Jason Ledlow, HGA Fundraising. Thank you so much for the time. And we appreciate you, you tuning in. So yeah. Trevor, before we start with the buckets, I, I, I was writing talk some notes you. down before this, you know, we had our yep. call before to talk about it. And and there was something that I want to just touch on first, I think is the most important thing that gets overlooked in every committee, every board, every group, every staff that start when they start thinking about raising money and doing their event. What is it? And the, the, the biggest thing is they forget to focus on the big money first. I love that. Focus on the big money first. How many, show of hands, how many of you have been in a, a committee meeting and everybody starts off talking about getting donations for the silent auction? We need to get the wine, the bottles of or wine. They start with, or wine or they even start talking about auction items. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. like you're, they're talking about themes and stuff. I mean, yeah. all those things are important, but how many of you, they start talking about that? It, show of hands. Come on. I know I know. I can't be the only one that's ever been Don't in that. Don't be ashamed. You can share. It's, uh, you're safe here. One person. We've got we've got one honest I person. I trust Jackie. The whole yep. group. Yeah, yep. one person. Well, the, the reality and is, Claire. oh, there's a couple. Yeah, I know. Everybody you. starts. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. Well, the reality is, 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 as professional fundraisers, as directors, executive directors, um, you know, volunteers that are leading these these groups and things, it is incumbent upon us to set the tone that we're what we're going to focus on to have the biggest impact on our fundraiser. And that is to to talk about the big stuff first. All the rest of it will work on, will work out. Yeah. All the rest of it. I can't, I literally cannot tell you how many times uh it comes up whenever i've been working with a group um or serving on a board doing whatever it was in whatever capacity and the first thing everybody talks about well has anybody got any good ideas for some live auction items hey you know what i've already i've already been out asking people for stuff for the silent auction sure. you know we get all that stuff and what are we going to serve for food this year well, and, and that's it we those are important parts they're really important parts but the most impactful word impactful thing that you can do for your fundraiser is pre-event fundraising by far it is yep. the number one way you can move the needle and go from having an okay to having a record-breaking evening and it just happens time after time after time uh that it that's it's before you walk in the door five years ago i would have said you need to have 50 percent of your money before you walk in the door now i'm going to tell you you need to have 70 percent. so if you want to raise a hundred thousand dollars net dollars we're talking net raise mm -hmm. that means You've probably got to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 165 to 100, you know, 125 to 165 thousand dollars in commitments in money before you ever walk in the door, before you ever sell an item, before you ever have a drink, before you do a raffle, before you have a silent auction item, play any games, do any fun to need. the fun to need, yep, all that. And so let's talk about what those big rocks are, and that kind of rolls into this whole the whole thing yeah. with the buckets. Well, the big yeah, rocks I, are. I, I, yeah, I like it when you say big rocks because the analogy when we do that one thing with the jar and the big yeah, rocks. Yeah, yeah. Here you comes know, the it's... sand. Here comes the little rocks, and it all fills it up. But let's start with the big rocks first. Let's I love start that. with the big rocks. The yeah, big, the big that. things are, um, uh, as far as fundraising, are going to yep. be sponsorships, underwriting, and the right people pre-commits for the fund to need pre-committed yep. fund to need gifts. Okay. Yeah. So yep. those are the first three. Those are the three big things that we can have a significant impact over and above everything else before we have the night of the event. But before that, the, the most primary thing is the people. Yep. And, and so that's kind of where it brings it back. So I, I'm going to ask anybody who's got any questions on that, because I want to make sure everybody understands where we're coming from. I had a question for you. 
Yeah, when you said pre commits for the fun and need, you mean it, the big picture is like get the right people in the room. You know, yeah, I've I, I know somebody who well, you've got to get the right people in the room, and the way that you do that is by sponsorships, working underwriting, and then the pre commits, and those are things that are going to come along. But the first thing that you got to do is have the right people because you can have the greatest stuff, the coolest auction items. We've got some awesome stuff, by the way. But you can have the best stuff in the world. But if you don't have the right people in, in the room, it's not going to work because you don't have anybody that can buy it. Or your fund of needs going to fall short because you didn't do that. Or you didn't raise enough money prior to and, you know, you don't have those have the right people in the room. I mean, that's just really simple to do that. I'm going to so ask the very some first questions. Thing you got to do the first thing you got to do is start with people. So yep. lay it yep. on me. Yeah, I want to ask some questions. Um, we're, we'll 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 hold off on getting the right people in the room and and doing the people exercise in a second. Does that sound good? Yeah, I just want, but I want to talk about people just for because we're going to do this. But this is yeah. so when we do this, it's it's you know, and I and I wrote this down. It's you know who we know. Yeah, who do we know? Who are the biggest fans? Our biggest fans are our biggest donors that we've already have. Yeah, you know the people that have given us the most money. Those are the people we're talking about. Yep, we want to be able because they want to be their stakeholders. So that's who we want to get to. And we'll talk about you. We'll talk in a minute about how to get those. Okay, Perfect. so we got that done. Now, now yeah. I'm ready. I'll fall back in line. Thank you. No I'm next. Go. Yeah, I want you to tell folks because you said get the right people in the room. Pre commits for the fun and need. I kind of get that. And we'll get we'll mm -hmm. get in the weeds there. Yeah. Tell us what what you mean when you say sponsorships, and then another big bucket when you say underwriting. Talk to us about when, what, when what you mean. I say sponsorships. Yep. When when I say the word sponsorship, I specifically mean selling tables and tickets. That's what I'm talking about. It has okay. everything to do with that. I personally, you know, just in my world of, of seeing impactful fundraising, and this doesn't fit for every organization. So I know there's some when I say these things. Every like every event, table so sales unique. don't work. Some of them tables don't work. They just don't. You know, you yep, can't do a fine. table. So uh, Beverly does an event. They really don't do table sales. They, they sell tickets. Um, but but that's where I'm talking about. It's that pre-event that, you know, tickets and tables. Those are going to set those up. One of the biggest, most impactful things I see is where somebody is undervaluing their sponsorships. Yeah. You know, this is where. Undervaluing the, 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 the value of the table. Well, under, yeah, undervaluing what, what that undervaluing the amount of money that it could it could raise and go that's, ahead and explain way. that a little bit and why we don't want to be upside down with the cost of having people yeah you got to take whatever your cost is multiply it by you know what's what's it going to cost for me to have um you know let's just say we're using a table of 10 okay because it's easy math yeah i've got a table for 10 and it's going to you know we went and did, you know we know based on our past what it costs per person and the yeah. way you do that is take all your expenses you know all those things because again, we're here to raise money, not just to have a party. Okay. If everybody just wants to have a party, different thing, but yep. we're talking about to raise money. Yep. So you take all your expenses, divide it by the number of tables you have, and that's what your cost per table is. Yep. And it's what do we want to sell that for typically? Okay. So let's just say that you, you know, you're, you spent a hundred thousand dollars and you've got 10 tables of 10. I'm doing this for easy math. Okay. Obviously we want to have more than a hundred people. But you would know that your table, you know, the cost of it is, is $10,000. Yeah. You know, you got so We're not going to ask 8000 per table then is the point. Yeah. So yeah. exactly. So we know we got, because, you know, we're having a real hoity-toity. Uh, yeah. With those numbers. Yeah. An event. $10,000 you know, tables. All this, I mean, yeah, that's cool, ten, man. Yeah, that yeah. $10,000, that's just what we're spending. So we've got to have two, you know, two to two and a half times that before we're really making money. Okay. Yep. Making money. Should be making money so, on those table sales. But let's yeah. just say that your event, let's just be more, you know, kind of bring it down to realistic. Let's just say that your cost per table was, you know, two grand. Without, yeah, okay. Let's say it's two cool. two grand. Okay, By the time cool. you figure everything in, so two thousand dollars. So it's if I'm selling tables in. for fifteen hundred dollars, I'm five hundred dollars upside down before I ever We start. see that a lot. Now, if everyone here and everyone watching this as a recording are not in that boat, then forgive us. We're bringing it up because we see it a lot and it's a cautionary tale yeah. not to be upside down on your ticket sales. That's for and, sure. you know, and, and so the first thing is, is we've got to figure out that and set that base price of where we're at, figure out where we're at. And then we go up from there. So a lot of times, I, you know, people are selling tables for $1,500 and their cost is $1,500 or maybe their cost is $1,200. Yeah. You know, and we're seeing those things happen and we're like, whoa, we can raise some money here because yeah, we just need more to raise room. the rate. And yep. everybody stops, you know, that's where you have to stop thinking with what you can afford 
what I can afford, what Trevor can afford, and what the people that we want to attract can afford. Correct. There's a reason that wealthy people fly first class. They stay in five-star hotels. Um, you know, they drive $200,000 cars drive. and live in, yeah. in million-dollar homes. Okay, there's yeah. a reason that all that happened. And I know million dollars is not what it was 20 years ago, so $5 million homes, okay? There's a reason they do all that. Well, one is because they can, and because two, they want the access. They want to have that special. They want to the be stand out. They they want yeah. to do, and that's that's yeah. I'm I'm broad. And they're okay with paying that. for it, though. Yeah. They're okay with paying for and it. And so, yeah. you know, when you've got people that have significant capacity to give, well, do I want them to be in the back row, in the table in the back because they paid fifteen hundred dollars because I just charged fifteen hundred dollars for every table? What if they would be willing to give $5,000 for a table at the front or 15000 or $25,000? We'll never round. know if we don't ask. Yeah. We will never know if we don't ask. Yeah. So I would just say that's the most important thing is to raise your rates. Raise it up and, and be proactive. Don't just – because you're going to have people that are going to complain about it. You're going to have every committee, every board, well, golly, that's going to – and you know why they're complaining about it? Because they buy a table and they don't want to pay more. Exactly. Good call. Yeah. So let me tell you how you get around that. Okay. Let's do it. You grandfather them in. If you've got some, unless you don't want them to come, but if you, you know, uh, but if you've got somebody that has been, you know, people that are actually volunteering, working, been on the committee and they are putting the time in grandfather them in. That's what we, uh, you know, I made that recommendation to another group and that's what they did. Cause they had people that were coming, they were spending six, seven, eight thousand dollars for a table. Okay. For this event. And you know, they were wanting to raise it up to 10 and, but they didn't want to pay. I said, well, just give yeah. your grandfather yourselves in at the lower rate. Yeah. You know, make I, it for that reward. So, I mean, those are some things that you can do to overcome yeah. that. I'm backtracking a little bit, but I also think it's, it's, it's worth mentioning again, understanding what your cost to produce that table is. I think it's something that you should definitely be speaking yeah. to, you know, thinking about speaking your committee about and understanding those costs. That's for sure. To make sure. And, once yeah, again. and and I, and I understand because we're going to get to underwriting and stuff in here in a minute. I understand yeah. that, um, you know, you say, well, you know, the food was donated. I don't. It doesn't matter. Take every expense that you have, divide it by the number of people that attend your event, and that's your head cost. That's what yeah. it costs. Yeah. So if it's seventy five dollars and it's ten, you got ten tops, you know, your cost is seven hundred and fifty bucks per table. Yep. Yep. So the very minimum, you know, that you would sell that for. Is fifteen hundred dollars the very yeah. minimum? But it's not about rewards; it's about what you can do. Um, you know, did you have a sellout crowd last year? Were you short? Are you trying to get more people? Are you trying to get less? All those things are factors that that you want to look at to say, you know, if you had wow, you know, we sold our tables out last year, and and we sold them out in the first fifth, you know, first day we put punched it out there, everybody bought a table. Yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. It's now too you cheap. Know it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's not you gotta get it, you gotta push the rate up. Yep. And the other thing that, you know, when you're wanting to get the attention of certain people, there are certain levels that they just operate in. Yeah. You know, you've got somebody that has significant they're used to paying twenty five thousand dollars for a sponsorship and that's the world they play in. Buying one for twenty five hundred just isn't gonna move the needle for them and they may not even give you much because one they're at one, one, why, why don't they ask us for that? Why aren't they doing that? Do they not know who I am? Yeah. So you need to know who you're, know your donors, know your prospective donors. Love that. And, uh, you know, and ask that question, give them a chance to do more. There's a lot of money in the system right now, a lot. Mm -hmm. And the people that are wealthy have a lot of capital. They're giving it away. No, I mean, I'm not sitting there saying it's not that things aren't, you know, tough and with inflation, but there's things that are tough in inflation. So our costs have gone up. So, so should this. Um, agreed. agreed. You, you uh, talk, we're, we're talking about sponsorships uh, mm -hmm. and we have another big bucket that I want to uncover. And I want to, I want you to give some examples. Cause I know we have some, some really, really cool experience and, and different really creative ideas for underwriting. Mm -hmm. Kind of talk to us about what, what that means to you. Okay. From an, from an underwriting so perspective. Underwriting is everything that's bolted down, that's not bolted down, that costs us money, that doesn't cost us money, that we could potentially get someone to pay us to, to, to cover, to advertise, to put their name on. Yep. Everything from audiovisual, check in, check out, red carpet, centerpieces, the bar, the wine, the valet. desserts, yep. valet. I mean, all of it, every, yep. fr everything. 
uh, the bathrooms. The silent auction the, table. The, the, yeah, I mean. Yeah, you know, yeah. the bathrooms, the silent yeah. auction, the golden ticket, the uh, the live auction sponsored by the stage, the lighting, the microphones, the music, the after yeah. deal, everything. You know, the, the, the signature drink of the night can be yeah. sponsored by somebody. Yep. All those things can raise you a significant they amount. They have a of value. Money. And folks, yeah, I mean, do. most of you probably you, you probably already all get this what we're what we're talking about. We're talking about the naming rights for the stadium. We're talking about what yeah. the the big logo on the scoreboard. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. We're talking <sighs> about underwriting and giving folks the opportunity to inviting folks and asking them to participate with their dollars by underwriting or sponsoring certain aspects of your yeah. event, if not all aspects would be the would be our rather. Well, and let me give you an example of how that would work and, and, and yep. some some reasons and other reasons specifically why. Yes, you want to raise money, but here's some here's some situations where this really works well. Okay. Trevor and I, you know, my wife and I, my wife Teresa and I, we love to go to an event with Trevor and his wife Shelby. Okay. We want to sit at their table. They've been inviting us for the last couple of years, but we want to participate in everything. And because we're reaching out and we're doing some good donor engagement, we send out opportunities to sponsor. You know, we're calling them up and saying, hey, somebody says, hey, Jason, you know, would you like to buy a table at the event this year? No, I really don't want to because I want to go and sit with Trevor and Shelby. Yeah. But they, but then the reverse of that would be to say, OK, would you be willing to would you want be willing to take a look at our underwriting list? Mm -hmm. You can go still go sit, sit with them, but it's something that you could do to help us further our mission of ABC, whatever that is. Yep. You'd be surprised. How many times, because one, you know, all of a sudden that I've got to go heaven because I can't be with my friends. I want to go have to go get a whole nother table. That's just not what I want to do. And I may not, that may not be my, my box that I check is filling a table, but I've got the capacity. I want to do it. And I go, yeah, I would love to underwrite something. Yeah. I, and I want my, you know, I like the people that are coming. I want them to see my, my logo, whatever that may be uh, company. And I put it out there and I say, yeah, I want the runway. Perfect. Because I've sent a list and I've got my, I can choose. So I can choose everything from, you know, maybe $500 to $5,000 and everywhere in between. It doesn't come with a ticket. Doesn't now everything's negotiable. Okay. We can always work yeah. through some of that, but don't start off with it. We have uh, uh, clients. They absolutely don't. If you want to buy a ticket, you buy a ticket. This is underwriting and you have to underwrite. So in other words, if you want the underwriting, if you want to buy the the red carpet, if you want that, that's great. But if you want to buy a ticket and come to the event, you got to buy a ticket. And what that okay. does is it raises the level of your event, the exclusivity. It elevates, the event. Yeah. It, it, it elevates it to a higher status because, yep. and that's what people want. Regardless of what we want to believe, what we think, or what we might want, People that have capacity, significant capacity to give, people want to go to the exclusive event. They don't want to go to the open barn dance that everybody shows up for and it's a $5 gate fee. They want to go to the exclusive, very, you know, hoity toity. And I say it doesn't mean your event has to be hoity toity, but exclusivity. So it's a yeah. way we can do exclusivity, but it's also a way we can raise valuable money. Because the other thing that, uh, and I'm going to say, like, let me give you a great example. Okay. Here's another example a bank. We all, you know, banks typically are really good stewards in their community. They want to help. They want to do stuff. But if you go to the bank and you submit your stuff, do whatever, and they come back and they buy a table because that's all that you gave them an opportunity to do, mm -hmm. what are they going to do with the tickets? Are you going to get the bank CEO and the board and all their significant others? Not guaranteed. Or are you going to get a bunch of tellers and, you know, their spouses, bank employees yeah. that are going to come and they don't have any money to, to, to really advance your mission. Yeah. So you're it's saying a, giving them the opportunity to yeah, underwrite. You give them the opportunity yeah. because if let's say that you are the CEO of a bank and you're helping, you know, one, one month, one event a month that you're working with yeah. and all this person has a table. Well, okay. I'm going to have to fill another table. I got to go through all this stuff. My wife, you know, then she's like, well, who are we going to invite to this thing? And we got to go back through all this rigmarole and who's who and who's sitting there and what are we doing? It really gets on businesses that, that are really programmed in. It gets really tough. But if you just say, Hey, look, we're going to let you sponsor our golden ticket. You don't even have to come. Um, all of a sudden they get all this activity, all this shine that it's advertising for them. They can be Certainly seen that they're in, the, in the community yep. Yep. and I don't have to go fill a table. Here's the third reason. 
How many times have we all been calling somebody and they go, oh, shoot, sorry, Trevor, I'm out of town that week. Yep. Oh, okay, We've well, I'll send plans. over a list of things that you can underwrite. Hey, a, no worries, not a problem. I'm going to yeah. shoot you over a list for underwriting. Would yep. you be willing to take a look at that? Yep. It changes the dynamic and it gives you more ways to engage with possible donors to let you, you're, you're giving them away an invitation to be a part of your organization. Yep. Well, in this Without case, they table. don't just have to show up and buy a table. Yep. They can show up, you yep. know, they don't have Love to show that. up at all. They can still help us. Um, we didn't, we didn't, no, we didn't skip over this step, but I kind of, you know, I already know how we, we approach it. And, and what Jason and I recommend is that you actually have a list a predetermined list of these underwriting opportunities like the AV check-in, check-out, valet, red carpet, all the above that you give folks the opportunity with a dollar amount next to them and you send them to folks or go over them in person with folks to give them, you know, per, you know, potential underwriters and supporters, giving them the opportunity to choose what they mm -hmm. want to underwrite with a predict with a particular dollar amount. Right. So yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah, it, it's it's really, you know, you just put that list together and let them sit, and then they can decide where they want to. Now, we've worked with companies that have software, and this is the really slick thing mm -hmm, that you do, mm -hmm. is you say, hey, Trevor, I'm going to shoot you over a link. Take it, pull that up and take a look at it. And in real time, they see all the stuff that's there, what's available, and they see what's been sold. Yep. What's been sold, what's available. Maybe you've got, you know, five of this one type of uh, underwriting that you're doing because you're wanting to do some something, and I'll give you some examples. Uh, I call it underwriting. Yes. That's what I say. Underwriting. Yeah, great question, Jen. Um, yeah. you know, uh, Jen just asked a question. Yeah. Do you, I would call, call it underwriting, underwriting opportunity. I really yes. like the word opportunity. Yeah. Underwriting um, opportunity. Yeah. And then I think any branding that you can do. Yeah. Thank you. Any branding that you can do alongside of that. Right. So underwriting opportunity in the name of your gala or the name of your event, if you have any branding involved, there would be really, really cool. Also, we are, we're talking about like the nuts and bolts of things. And then mm -hmm. Jason keeps alluding to the psychology and how it's going to be perceived and the opportunity that you have to raise more money. Think about, think about folks that are already on board with your mission and your organization and how they're going to perceive this new mm -hmm. creative way of raising money for your organization with sponsorship and underwriting opportunities. I just don't think that we can really overlook how creative and how awesome and impactful that can be for folks that are getting their eyes on it the first time that know your organization, or maybe they don't know your organization that well yet, but they see how creative you are at fundraising. I think that's something that can't be overlooked, especially with this presentation, with the invitation slash opportunity to give and participate. I think it's huge. So, yeah. Um, hey, Bev, Bev had, had a good question. question. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to just give you an example of what I'm Great what question, talking Bev. about Thank here. You. So yeah. Beverly asked about, you know, on this underwriting, how do we, how do we recognize things? Like, let's say we did the audio visual. Well, yeah. how do we recognize this, but we don't have a place to put a sign on it. All you have to do is get a simple form, put it up on the wall, put it up on your uh, overhead audio visual, yeah. have it showing up there and it just pops yeah. up there and it just has a, a run through. It's like a, a, Auto, an well, auto show, you know, I can't think, uh, yeah, like it? an auto play. Totally. Yeah. It's a slide. Yeah, and show, it just sits there and a slide show, a slide show. and it just yeah. shows up there and it just says, and you have it going all night long, totally. unless you're doing a specific program. Yeah. It's just sitting there going all night long. Audio visual brought to you by ABC auto auto supply. Totally. And if you, you know, have a host MC auctioneer, they could be doing that verbally. That slideshow's going when you're not in the middle of your live auction or, you know, or, you know, golden hour of fundraising and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Obviously we don't want it to be a distraction because you'll be playing other videos and things of that nature. But yeah, I mean, you, you also listen, it doesn't mean a lot to some folks. It means a lot to others. You can guarantee a certain amount of social media posts, an email blast. Don't do text. it. I'm just saying, I mean, you have this at yeah. your ready though. You know yeah. what I mean? You but here's the thing. Ready. Nobody cares. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're doing this, for the nobody I just cares. Said so, some people posts. will care. Some people absolutely won't. But care. if yeah. you promise it, you have to deliver. Have so to do don't it. make promises. Yep. Don't make promises that you can't keep because I literally had, there was a, we, this is, we had an, or, had a deal, had a big party, had a thing. Um, you know, it was like $10,000 sponsorship and there was a cheese tray. You were going to get a cheese tray to ha host your party. This was during COVID. Yeah, yeah, I remember this one. And the lady that, that sponsored it wanted her cheese tray. And the executive director said, well, I just don't understand why she's making such a big deal about it. I said, because you promised her you would have it. If you hadn't promised her, she would have got her own cheese tray. Yeah. I'm just but saying there's a bunch of promised her and now she doesn't have a cheese tray. Yeah. So don't make, you know, I can tell you at the end of the day, nobody cares. Nobody. 
but if you tell them, well, you're going to get 40, you know, 40, uh, post on social media they're going to make sure that they got their 40 posts I, I but yeah no you're not wrong don't don't put yourself in that situation because that's not what you're selling you're, you're not selling, selling advertising you're selling the mission yeah. you're inviting them to participate yes yeah. that is a that is a byproduct of what they're doing that there's some the shine and the advertising and all that stuff as mentioned but, i think just just a, yeah. just be yeah. aware of it it means something to some folks it means absolutely nothing to others i think is the truth right i think yeah. we can settle on uh, that yeah but but if you just you know and you know funny thing signage i'll tell you so we've got a group uh that we work with uh this group of ladies down in texas and their sign literally because i've seen it yeah. it is about you know 12 by six okay six by 12 a little sign on it's a postcard. chrome stand yeah, and yeah. it sits out in front of the restrooms and it says refreshing stations brought to you by abc company yeah. they sell it for four thousand dollars yeah yeah and it's one of the first things that goes because it's everybody sees it everybody's going to the bathroom and everybody sees it and, and so it's fun yeah. you know and you so friends friends of hga that have been that have been with us for hundreds of episodes you've heard us say this so many times so forgive yeah. us and then folks that we're meeting for the first time you know, we tell a story, you know, consistently because it's such a great, it's such a great experience uh, that we got to share with a, a friend and a, and a client and they sold their refreshing station, their bathroom to a plumbing company for, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. So you see the connection well, there. That's obvious. Well, they sold it for $500. Remember that Trevor? They oh, sold, pardon me. Sold and it the, they, they donated sold it for $500. And then yeah. the guy, the, the guy came to the event as a boat. Yep. He so he wound up donating a dinner on his yacht yep. that sold for ten thousand dollars two times. So they, they, yep. that that five hundred dollar ask because they asked. This is something too. And, and when we talk about the people exercise, this will really make. We got to get sense. to that. Yeah, this will make sense. So yep. there are three ways. That, there are four ways, but we're just going to talk about three. Okay, there are three ways that people can help us. That we're okay. trying to identify the people we know. Can and we're setting the table for the we're set let me let me set the mood and the and the let me set the well, mood and the and the setting. This okay. is in the committee meeting where you know we're talking with the committee. We've got a whiteboard, we're all meeting together, correct? Is that what you mean? Yes? For the people exercise? Are you talking to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, well, I, well I was gonna I was gonna get there, but what I was trying to oh, say is how me. people help us. What gotcha. I was trying to say is how people can help us. They can write a check for $10,000 and not miss it. Yep. Okay. And, and I'm not saying everybody, I'm just saying, giving an idea, this idea for this. Mm -hmm. They can fill a table. Okay. Yes. With 10 people that are going to come and be a part of our mission. Maybe they've got some kind of special access. Well, let's just say that there's somebody who does not, is not the fill a table kind of person, but he can write a check for $50,000 and not miss it. And we never give him an opportunity because the only thing we ever ask him is what he want to buy a table. Yeah. And he's like, I don't want to buy a table. Yeah. I'm not, I don't, I, I don't socialize that way. That's not what I want to do. You know, I, I, it's just not his, their world. And that's the way it is with a lot of people. So we've alienated somebody's opportunity to be a part of our mission because of the way that we asked them, because we only gave them that way. There are so many businesses, so many people out there who would love to be a part of your organization, but they just, that's just not their world. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't mean they don't care. I, I personally, know, I know a guy who can write a check, a check for a hundred thousand dollars, not miss it, or maybe probably a million and not miss it. He's very, very wealthy, very successful entrepreneur, but this guy, he'd rather slide the check under the door. And I remember, you know, whenever they had a big tape, they had a big, this, this event, this big event came, they, he, he got it. They gave him the big table. And I, I asked, and, and then they just donated the table back and they put some guests and stuff there. And so I asked the, the executive director, I said, why didn't you just let him be a sponsor, be an underwriter of something and let him be the title, you know, title sponsor and forget the table. And this funny look, and this is, she's a world, she's a very world-class fundraiser. I mean, she's very good. She just goes, it never occurred to me. Yeah. Because I said, you know, Ty was never going to go. Yeah. He was never going to take the table. Never. Was the table empty? Was the table empty? No, they put some, they put some volunteers and people yeah, around yeah. there, you gotcha. know, and some, some of the, the recipients that, and they did that. So it all turned out fine, but I'm just saying to me, they gave up $25,000 that they could have sold it to somebody else. Yeah. And, you know, we're here to raise money. And so we've got to be thinking about that because this is hard. This thing's hard enough. It, if you do it poorly, it's really hard. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've go. ever met anybody that ran an event and goes after, after they got done, they go, well, that was easy. That was a breeze. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, let's do it down again. the road. It's just, it is hard. It's very hard. So if it's, you're going to work that hard to put these things together, give yourself a chance. And this is something that you need to start really soon, but it's not something that we've done this in less than 30 days before an event and it made a significant impact because you said, well, I've already got my stuff. I already have my table stuff set up. Okay. But you haven't done underwriting. So let's go out here and put some stuff together and start sending it out. And they raised an extra $20,000. Did they sell everything? No, but they raised an extra 20 grand that they were not going to get. It was not going to be there. Yep. Um, the opportunity and, was there. That's the point. Yeah. And, and here's the great thing. You know who they raised most of the money from? The people that were already coming. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, that was, that, that was the amazing thing to me when the, I was like, wow, they didn't even, they, these people were already going. They just had, they just found another way to ask. So, Love it. so I think now, you know, just going back, I want to recap these two things and then yep. we'll jump into the people exercise. Please do. Yep. Sponsorships. That's about your tables, you know, the levels, make sure that your levels are up there. Even if you say, well, Jason, I've never got a $15,000. I've never sold a $15,000 table, raise the price anyway, raise to 25,000. Okay. If you don't sell it, so what? You're not going to publish on there. 25, you know, sp- you know, platinum sponsor n- unsold. You're not going to do that. You're just going to take the top one that you've got, and, and that's what you're going to roll it. with. Yeah. I love that. Um, but I think that you'll see here's something too. when you start asking people for money. Okay. I'm, I'm going to come back, but let me finish sponsorships. I want to be clear on that. Set your organization, make sure that your bot start with your bottom level. Don't start at the top, start with the bottom level. Make sure that you're making at least two times expenses on that. Okay. If it costs you $75 a person, you're doing 10 tops. That means, you know, for the whole thing, which I, if you're getting it done for 75 bucks, you probably might want to up it a little bit because you're going to have more money to spend and make it more appealing. Um, so do that and then start up there. You know, you could have 2,500, 5,000, 7,500, 10,000, and then have an exclusive $25,000, you know, hit there. But one of the things that I found that it's real in, interesting to me is somebody who, when we didn't ask somebody to do more, they were willing to do more, but we didn't ask. And they're like, well, you didn't ask. So I didn't figure you didn't need it. Yeah. Missed opportunity. I figured you had plenty of money because nobody asked. Okay. Underwriting, underwrite everything, whether it costs you money or doesn't cost you money, just put a list together of anything and everything. Yep. You know, I'm talking about the refreshing. Everybody's going to have bathrooms, put it on there. Everybody's going to have a stage, put it on there, whether it, whether it's a, a built in stage or not, it doesn't matter. The ladies in Texas I was talking about, they, they, they sold theirs for like two or $3,000 and it was a, just a outside stage built into the thing, but they still underwrote it. And, you know, because that was, that's just, they, they, that they, they've gotten good at it and they put that out there because people want to have their name on something. They want to be, know that they're a part of it. They want to people, they want to be recognized as being, as caring about the organization. Um, so on people. It's not what you know, it is who you know. Most powerful fundraising tool is right here. And yet so many organizations leave all that valuable data, valuable connections, they never tap into them, ever. Doing this, and I really didn't start doing the people exercise stuff until about five, six years ago. I really kind of got had it crystallized and somebody really kind of opened my eyes to it. And I was like, holy cow. This is pretty much, this is, this a great idea. Who do you already know? Because we can all sit around and go, golly, I sure wish the local billionaire would come in here and be one of our sponsors. Well, unless somebody can pick up the phone and text them, you're not going to know because we're talking about setting the, the stage. But I can assure you, everybody on this call, everybody here, you have a million dollars of donations locked up in your phone contacts. I promise you, you do. If you're more than 15 years old, I'm talking about adults, you've got at least a million dollars. And the reason I know that is because we just all know people. And uh, And we know people that know people. Yeah, we know people that know people. (laughs) And you put a committee together. Let's say you have a committee of 10 people. Ah, we're sitting at the table. And and you bring it all in together. And you're sitting all around and everybody's going, because we want to focus on the big rocks. 
we want to focus on getting all the stuff. But before we can do the sponsorships and the underwriting, we got to know who are we going to ask? Good call. So we can, and, and if without this exercise, literally and show of hands, how many of y'all have had something, who could we sell this to? Who could we get to be a title sponsor? Everybody starts sitting there and no, and no one says a word. Well, maybe we could get so-and-so. Well, maybe we could, and you, you, nobody can come up with a name. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, one honest person, the whole list, every, all the rest of y'all have been, no, Alejandra put her hand up too. Thank no, you. Alejandra. Yeah, awesome. thank you. I, I, <laughs> I say that very teasingly, but, um, but please understand that you've got all this information and it, and it takes a little bit to get it going. Okay. Yep. But this is an exercise that you can do. Go get, I'm going to show you. See, we're setting the table. I was just a little early. I was early. Yep. Yep. Whiteboard paper. Start you know, writing down names. Go start with the A's. We start with yeah. the A's usually. And, yeah. But just open up your, you know, get everybody say, pull your phone out. We're going to do a people exercise. What do you mean? Just trust me. This is what we're going to do. I want you to open up your contacts. When you get to your contacts, I want you to start at the A's. And I just want you to go down the list. And when you see a name and you think that that person might be interested in helping us, I just want you, want you to give me their name. And they go down, they start saying, Aaron, Abe, Adam. Alan, Alana. And what are we asking out of these people? If they can write a 10,000. We're not going to ask them anything yet. We're just okay. asking for names. We just want to get some names because I'm going to sit there and go around the room and I'm going to go, Hey, Calvin. Hey man. Hey, I know you got a name. Go ahead and give me one. Uh, Al, Adam, Christina, come on. You can do it. Holly. Thank you so much. Trevor. I'm going to do this to get these names and I'm just going to write them up on my, my big board, either on my big piece of paper, my sticky pad, nothing else. I'm just going to write it down. And we're going to go down the list and down the list and down the list. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get to C, D, E, just, you know, spend 15 minutes doing it. I, because there's going to be somebody in your group who will not say a name because they're holding back because they're not sure. And you go, no, it's okay. There's got to be somebody in your phone. If you got to go to Z to get one and they'll go, well, Matilda. Okay. I'm going to write down Matilda. Okay. And once they get going, and just say, look, we're just putting this list down. We're going to talk about it. Um, we're not going to ask friends for money. I'll, uh, uh, thank you. That's so, a great question. Um, Alejandra said, what if, it, you know, what if the people in the committee don't want to ask their friends for money? We're never going to ask for money again. Okay. When, after this webinar, you will know that we will never, ever ask anybody for money again. For the rest of your life, you will never have to ask for anybody for money. I promise. If you just follow these rules. So we're going to get these names. Then we're going to go back through the names and we're just going to simply go, okay, can, you know, Adam Smith, can he write a check for $10,000 and not miss it? Now, notice I said not miss it. We're looking for significant ability to give, you know, uh, Calvin can write a check for $10,000, but he might miss it. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm just picking on Calvin cause he's fine. Um, but my point is, we're looking for that significant ability. And so if we're not sure, then it's a no, but then, so we're going to go down the list and we just do that. We're just trying to see who has capacity to give in our, in our, our names, what we put out there. Then we're going to go back and say, can they fill a table? If we have a, an event, could they fill a table with, you know, eight or 10 people? If it's a yes, we check. Yes. If it's a no, we leave it blank. And the last one that we're going to do is we're going to go down that list and we're going to say, um, do they have any special access? Special access can mean anything. Maybe they've got a great backyard and they love to entertain. Oh, a yacht. Maybe, you yeah. know, maybe, yeah, they've yeah. got a yacht, on, on, yeah. you know, somewhere. Um, their nephew is an astronaut at NASA. I don't know. It could be anything. Maybe they're, you know, um, you know, my cousin's the mayor. Uh, whatever, you know, some kind of access. Now, some people will check all three boxes. Some people check one and some people will check none. And that's okay, too. Because what we do with the ones that check none, because obviously we sit, there's a reason I thought they might be interested in our organization. We're going to put the, put a V by there because we can still talk to them because there may be something they can do. They still may be a thousand dollar donor. Okay. But mm -hmm. for this purpose, we're just trying to find these certain buckets, what we're trying to do. Um, so once we do that, now I'm going to come back to Alejandra for just a second, Trevor, because I want to hit on this. This is it. so important. I think I couldn't think of a better question, actually. So thank you. Alejandra. Um, I don't ever want to ask anybody for money. In fact, I, I, I just think it, 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 it changes everything because it's me asking, Hey, Trevor, Hey, I got a group here. Hey, you, 
write a check for five thousand dollars to him. That just kind of sounds weird. Yeah. Okay. It's tough. It's a tough one. But if I call Trevor up and I said, Hey bro, hey, um, I know you care about this stuff kind of stuff and I wanted to have a call with you. And uh, just let you know, I'm working with this organization. We send kid, kids with cancer to camp. It costs a thousand bucks to send a kid. Uh, and, you know, we're trying to send a hundred kids. How many kids would you and Shelby be willing to help? I just want to invite you to be a part of this to see if, you know, just, to, I just want to make the invitation. I'm putting my name on it. I believe in it. I believe in who's running yeah. this organization. Because doing great work. I'm not people. asking for yeah. money. I'm inviting it's them to invitation. participate. Yep. It is a completely different take on it. Because asking for money feels weird. It's like I'm asking for you to give me something. It's like I feel, you know, for me personally, it makes me feel like I'm the person sitting out on the medium with the thing that says, God bless, anything helps. Yep. You know, I just, that's how I feel about it. But with an organization that I believe in, that I'm doing it, and I've broken my mess, my ask down to what that incremental give is, if it's research, hey, you know, this deal, this disease, such, you know, it, it costs a hundred dollars thousand dollars per hundred hours of research yeah or what whatever it is whatever the, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a hundred dollars yeah. a minute for research yeah. how many minutes would you be willing to do an hour that's six hundred dollars yeah. i don't know whatever that can whatever that is because i'm just inviting them to participate please when you change that that message from asking for money to inviting to be impactful for your nonprofit, yeah. it will change everything there yeah. was an organization um the executive director, great, phenomenal manager running stuff. He's, he was exceptional. And he picked up the phone, called, made three phone calls a day. And all he did was talk to his, because he ran a camp about, talked about the pool and that they were looking for, for, um, uh, champions, pool champions. Would you like to be a pool champion? I think that was how they, and just ask him, I'm just inviting you to be a part of it. I know that you went there as a kid and, you know, camp without a pool isn't much of a deal. We got to get this thing fixed. Just want to see if, I just want to make sure that you knew that you were invited to be part of it. He raised $165,000 in like less than 90 days, making three phone calls a day, five days a week. There's another lady that raised $100,000 for an elevator. No, I'm sorry, $150,000 for an elevator. Never made an ask in her life. And she, because she was scared to death to ask people for money, I said, don't ask anybody. You just make an invitation. I just wanted to invite you to be a part of our part of our elevator group to make it safe. Yeah. Raise one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Love it. So please. And whenever you huge talk shift, to your, huge your committee shift. and you just say, look, I don't want you to ask for money at all. I just want you I to want make you an to invitation. Hey, I just want you to know that you're invited to be a part of this with us. Yep. Yep. It changes everything. So um, that list that we just talked about is a very powerful thing. You know, you get somebody who volunteered to be a scribe, you take all the, take all the big sticky pads and you put it into a simple little spreadsheet and you put down the name. I know Trevor said Adam, Calvin said, you know, Matilda, whatever. And we put all that stuff down. We write all that down so I know who the contact is. And so now I've got a database of people that we can do. You're also going to have people who are going to say, I still don't feel comfortable making an ask. 90% of all people do. It's just normal, okay? Don't feel like you're the... Anybody here have a have a, a committee or a board who just loves to go out and raise money? Anybody. There's crickets. No one has that. I've never seen it in my life where everybody had everybody wanted to go do it. Because it's just it's foreign to our what we do. Yeah. So they probably feel like it's a job. But but what you can do is you can rephrase that. Text message is a beautiful thing. Video texts are really Video's awesome great. ways to ask. Yeah. You know, a video text. And um they leave it to you, Calvin. Yeah, exactly. So what you can do is just say, We're "Here, nudge them." I just want you to send this text to the, to these people. Yep. Great. Hey, send, yeah, hey, you, Calvin's going to be. Video, if you're not comfortable with phone yeah. call, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if I, if you just asked me yeah. to send a text that, hey, my friend Calvin with ABC Charity, you know, Calvin Fields is going to be giving you a call. Please give him five minutes of your time. I, I would appreciate it. That's all you're asking. I'm just, I'm asking you to take a phone call. Perfect. I, I, I just cannot, believe, you know, and quite frankly, if you got somebody who's not willing to do anything, then they're, they're, they don't need to be on the committee. Okay. Yeah, they're not good. They they're can go be, fits. they can go be on the, on the, the yard committee. All right. We don't need them yeah. in the fundraising committee. And then boards are a completely different, you know, a separate issue where they actually have a fiduciary responsibility to raise money. for the Yeah. Organization. So, but you know, what, what I found though, 
And what I've found is when you have some patience and you give these tools, some direction. such as what to ask for, what the impact is going to be, what that means, how to invite, who they already know, you will find that it's so much better, so much, you know, it, it starts coming and flowing. And one yeah. person, success begets other success. No question. Um, you know, and don't and, and, and hey, obviously little little point here. Don't don't forget to celebrate it as a group, right? Yeah. Someone's success, and then yeah. also being able to to have a succinct message. I mean, we've talked about this before on an entire webinar about having your mission's message down in ten words or less. If you if you have someone on your committee or board explaining to 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 you know potential uh, suitors and supporters for the first time. Having your mission's message, and then of course, once again, quantifying where the dollars are going and how they're being used is paramount. And everyone could basically be, you know, quote unquote, scripted, but everyone can be on the same page saying the same thing. That's the idea. You know, we did a deal. I'm going to tell you this little thing we did with the group because you know, once the committee leaves leaves the committee meeting, and everybody says, "Yeah, man, we're all fired up. We're going to all go call twenty people this week." Yeah. They walk out of the meeting. They don't call anybody. They come back. Hey, how'd your how'd your calls go? Well, you know what, man, I'm going to have to make those. I just kind of got tied up and I had, you know, my kid got strep throat and I had to, some issues at work and, you know, the car broke down. I got a flat tire, whatever. I mean, all this stuff, just life. Okay. It's just life yeah, and it happens real. to everybody. It's real. Yeah. It doesn't mean they really don't care. So what I would recommend doing is when you have your committee meetings and you're trying, especially at the first part, now, obviously there's going to be some stuff that you as the fundraiser, you know, like Calvin said, it left to you, but Sometimes you can make this invitation kind of fun. Beverly's uh, committee, we did a thing with her and everybody took, got their phone out, did a video text. Hey, we're going to have such and such event at so-and-so time. And this is what it's going to be. And I'd love for you to be there. Now it's funny because everybody went off in the room and did it, did their little deal. And of course the ladies are, and then they start doing it. Oh shoot. I got to start over again. They start over, but they did a little video, you know, 15 seconds. And then they just start texting it to everybody they could think of on their, on their phone. Everybody did it. I don't, Bev, did anybody not do it? I don't remember anybody not doing it that day. Um, because one, and they all kind of got a giggle out of it and started laughing because they got started getting responses. And, you know, it sounds like a, a silly thing and, and stuff, but you know, the worst thing in the world that I po you could possibly ever hear is whenever somebody goes, wow, I wish I'd have known about that event. I would have helped. Yeah. It's the worst. That's the worst feeling, you know? Yeah. Well, let I mean, me know next year. Yeah. No one asked. No one asked. <laughs> yeah. Trevor did it. No had, had a statistic me. at the end of this, yeah. this year. And he said, man, like $200 billion was raised in the last two days of the year. Oh, crazy. And it was like, yeah. you know, this incredible amount of money for nonprofits. And, and he goes, why do you think that is? And I said, because every, they, that's when everybody was asked. That's crazy. And it is, if you don't ask. Well, everyone thinks it's about, it's about tax benefits and they're really, really off base, to be honest with you. Yeah. Not, folks aren't in a mad dash to give at the end of the year because they want to, they want to improve their, their tax situation and their base. It has everything to do with people. Yeah. Asking. But, but yeah. it's about asking. So, Hey, everybody, if you got any questions, yeah, let's last, hit last, us up. Call, last, last call for questions. I hope, I hope this has been really good for you guys. Yeah. And, and I hope, you know, the biggest thing is, is this is where, this is where the most of your work needs to be and your focus, focus on the, fi the, fi uh, the funding, fundraising, everything Great. else will come into place. It will, yep. you'll get all that stuff done. How would you tee up the people to people exercise to get buy-in. Well, first of all, you got to have them in the same room together. You know, it's going to be, awesome. you can't, if you just send them a list, say, Hey, I'm going to do the people exercise. Give me this stuff. Nobody's going to do it. <laughs> it's got to be something you've got to do together. Can't do it over Zoom. Room. I, I've it done it. Zoom. We've done it in living rooms before with a little, one of these big, big sticky note pads. We yep. just got it. And we just laid them out on the back of a couch. Yep. As we, as we peeled them off, we stuck them on this deal. They said, yeah, just let's, let's put them on here. And yeah. we just kept putting them out there until we went, we went through this and you know, everybody's drinking, had a glass of wine and they're having fun. Oh yeah. Let's just get Mary and Mary Ann. They'll be, Oh, oh I, yeah, know, Tom. I know Mary Ann. Tom, That'd be great. I know Tom. He's got, yeah, and he's it got just, the boat. It gets going. And, uh, and, and, and that's where it is. Don't the buy-in comes when you just start doing I know that sounds weird. And, and if anybody has any, you know, you want to drill down on this, 
sign up for coaching. Yeah. Go to hjfundraising.com. Click on yeah. coaching. Sign up. Trevor and I, we, we, we love to do this, and we're more than happy to spend time with you. There's no, it's free. There's no obligation. You don't need to do anything. Just yeah. come on there, and, and we'll do that. You know, and I had, I, I coached with somebody last week. She's been doing this for 24 years. She's really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's really good. But we did all this stuff. And she said, you know, Jason, I've been doing this for 24 years. She goes, you know that because you've known me the whole time. Yeah. And she said, I've been doing this 24 years. She said, this was such a good refresher because you just get caught up every day in this stuff. Well, and so I does everybody it. else. Hey, you we're know, because, operating a company. We get caught yeah. up in the day to day and, and miss the big picture and miss fundamentals that we know. And I was going to say yeah. the same thing, Jay, piggyback on uh, obviously, you know, who knows more about this than I do, but, um, the free coaching button on our, on our homepage, sign up. Our time is free. We give our best information away for free and we can get in the weeds with you about the people exercise or anything that we went over or anything fundraising for that matter. Um, yeah. If you're wanting to do, be, if you're like, yeah. Hey, I, I'm really not sure on this underwriting thing. Can you spend some time with me? Yep. Um, happy to do it. Happy, happy to do, happy to do it. it. So no. hey, hope that we helps. really don't sell table, you know, I, Beverly, you know, she can tell you, yeah. they don't sell tables at their event. They just, but they, what's another great opportunity that I could use to raise money? There's some stuff we can talk, you know, we, yep. we've talked about that and help them to get their, get their yep. numbers up. Yep. Yeah. And thanks you, for being just, patient with us. We know that with all our, all our illustrations that every event's unique and different mm -hmm. and has its own shape and what have you. And that's awesome. There's just some things where you can really twist the dial and really raise a lot more money. So I hope everyone got a lot of value out of that for sure. Yeah. So I am coming Let's give something away, man. To... Okay, and the winner is... Do we get a wheel? Do we get the wheel? Oh, the wheel's next. Yeah, 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 fun. Hold on. Oh, hang in there. Don't Hold leave. Hold on. Don't, Don't leave because you might win something. It'll be cool. Oh, I've got it coming up. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Winner. All right. Christine Singer, you are the winner today. Hey, Christine. Okay, Christine, cool. Congratulations. Christine, in the chat, tell us where you're from. Tell us the name of your organization. Good on you. You won. <laughs> what did you win, though? That's the cool question, right? That's the next well, step. We're about to find out. What did because... you win? What did you win? Here, here it here is. Reach up and touch the screen because here comes the spin. Ow. Suspenseful. It's suspenseful. We have our own bank. Big money. Nice. Five hundred dollars. Cool. Holy smokes. That's a big winner, Christine. Come on. That's awesome. I yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Yep. So congratulations, yep. Christine. You just uh you won five hundred HGA bucks. Yep. Uh we should do something clever like Jason, tell her what she won. But five hundred dollars in HGA yeah. bucks. How cool is that that you can use towards any HGA auction item at your next event? We'll be in touch with everybody with a recording within 24 hours. And then Christine, someone from our team will be in touch with you with uh, all the details on the HGA bucks. Not a lot of strings attached to it uh, and how you can use it whenever you're good and ready. Can't thank everybody enough. All the folks that we've seen before and all the new folks that joined us today. Baraboo, Thanks. Wisconsin. That's where that's going. She's in Baraboo, Wisconsin. I awesome. love that. Far out. Uh, that's Nicole, awesome. Thank you so much for that. It's, it's cool. uh, we, we really Golf appreciate outing. the time. Great. Thank you yeah. for that feedback. That's awesome. Um, yeah, uh, everybody have a great week and we will see you soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jay. That was awesome. Appreciate everybody. We'll see you all next time. Thank you.